Hey uh, everyone, thanks for coming to uh, Builder's Call. Um, uh, I'm actually going to hand it off to Zach and he's going to make a few announcements and then we will dive into the topic of the day, which is going over a uh, tokenomics model um, that I've been working on and really just give a general feel of what we're uh, trying to accomplish and hopefully get some input see if there's other areas that um, um you know other areas of focus that uh could be added to this model um but yeah just kind of free rolling talking about models talk about economics and uh see what kind of cool input and feedback we can get but to kick it off uh zach go for it uh with your announcements yeah thanks shane um appreciate the, the handoff here um, I've got a few announcements. The the most important one, I think, for everybody, which you've been hearing now for weeks, is um, we have Retro PGF, and it does end tomorrow. We've had an influx of people applying, which has been awesome, but um, it ends May 31st at basically 11.59 p.m. UTC. So it's not on, not on uh, our Discord time zone. It is on UTC. Um, so make sure you get those in. They put the link in the chat here. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, please let us know. If you need to make a change after you submit, like nothing's impossible here. We make up the rules, so um, just send us a note, and one of us can help you out. We're not trying to make this a we're not trying to make this a barrier to entry. We're just trying to um, have a you know a fair deadline for everybody to get in. So if you do have any issues, please DM me or Ben. Um, so retro PGF uh, for those of you who are on any grants. So that's a maintainer grant, a quick grant. Um, any other milestone-based grant, please make sure you get your updates in. So uh, the first falls on Saturday this week. Um, obviously, I won't be reviewing it over the weekend. So as long as you have your, your review in by Monday, um, that'll count. But please make sure you get those in. Otherwise, again, we automatically close those grants without any impact report. Um, and as always, you can DM me. Uh, other things of note, I think that's the big ones here. Um, yeah. For the grants people, I guess the the I will queue up. We are going to make some changes to grants. I'm going to post this next week, but I think everybody will find these changes to actually be um, very fair and nice. Basically, giving people opportunities to do work that isn't based on a monthly kind of impact cadence. So again, like opening an RFP for work you want to do that's based on deliverables or milestones. So I do think it's going to make it a lot easier to understand how the grants work instead of trying to dub in the work you want to do under the quick grants model but i'll post that to the forum and collect some feedback next week and um, we'll make those changes early in the month back to you shane you might All be right, muted cool sorry yeah yeah thanks for that um yeah awesome guys uh so what i'm going to do is what I wanted to do is just give a, a, a basic overview of, uh, like I said, the current model that I'm working on. Uh, open to feedback, open to hear what folks' thoughts are. Um, I'm kind of actually between two models right now. One is based around relays, and the other one is a conversion of that into compute units. And I'll explain a little bit of what uh, that means in just a moment. Um, but... Uh, to kick things off with, what I wanted to do, and let me see, let me now share my screen, make sure that uh... okay, there we go. Oh, okay, wait a minute. All right. All right, our, is uh, is this visible to everyone? It is to me. We're okay. looking at a Notion page. Yep. All right, and then uh, you guys can see when I switch tabs, correct? Yep. Okay, perfect. So uh, this uh, this page right here, actually, we're going to be releasing very shortly. There's been a lot of uh, uh, great feedback uh, on it, but one thing I wanted to highlight here is basically our goals. What are our goals with Shannon Tokenomics? Uh, obviously, we want to have permissionless gateways. We want to have permissionless uh, suppliers, we, which we already technically already have today, but we want to maintain that. 
Uh, we want to have an adjustable deflation target. Uh, we want to have competitive staking APR, incentivize independent node running. Uh, we also want this to be modular um, so that we can ultimately have other data types that maybe follow some other uh, kind of path uh, or some other way of calculating rewards. Uh, we also want to have actually, which we're, we are going to be changing to sources, um, uh, sources rewards. These are uh, these are the clients. Uh, we've also called them champions in the past, but I think we're sticking with the term sources. Uh, so we want to have a reward for the sources, whether it be a chain client, whether it be an LLM, uh, whatever the ultimately the software is that suppliers are running. Uh, that software that the suppliers are running is generating value on the network uh, because that's what users are wanting access to. Um, and so we want to be able to have a reward for them. We also want to deal with self-dealing, uh, and we want to increase rewards uh, when there's growth in relays and when there is a growth in price. So uh, that's kind of our North Star. That's what we're hoping to do. Now, I don't have slides. I, I didn't lay all this out in kind of like a slides format. Uh, because ultimately what I wanted to do is just jump right into this current model that I'm working on. Now, uh, I'm going to blow this up a little bit so maybe folks can see. Is that a good, is that a good uh, uh, text size to be able to see and read? Okay, got a thumbs up. Perfect. So uh, this is the current model that I'm working on. And... Uh, what we have here is we have uh, network conditions. This is pretty simple. This is just where you put in certain parameters, like what is the price right now? Uh, how much do we want to have uh, nodes uh, staked at? Um, right now I have the default at 60,000 pocket. Um, and then these are the amount of relays that are currently on the network. Uh, and then this is a conversion into compute units. Now, let me quickly explain compute units. So how Shannon, Shannon, uh, Ben Van, did you have a comment? No, I'm sorry. I was just logging in from a different machine so I could see your screen. No worries. No worries. Uh, okay. So uh, the reason uh, the reason I have compute units here is because Shannon is technically uh, like in the actual Shannon code, the protocol itself, uh, it already has baked in compute units where everything is calculated in compute units. So uh, we typically operate though in our, uh, in how we talk about things in uh, relays though. We're always like, you know, a billion relays a day. Uh, you know, we wanna hit deflation by, you know, 10 billion, 20 billion relays a day. Uh, that's typically how we talk, even though in Shannon, it's technically broken down into compute units. Um, so, uh, so what I have here is uh, I'm pulling in data actually from pocket scan. So this is all pocket scan data that then uh, I, I port in. So all this here uh, is all from pocket scan uh, from uh, a few days ago. And then, uh, and then what I'm doing is I then have to essentially calculate how much compute units uh, these relays represent. So real quick, just to finish going over this, this is, uh, uh, you know, the relays per day, this is compute units. And then uh, this is how much is being minted uh, above burn. Uh, so if we're, um, so right now with how it is right now, we are essentially minting 200 or 129,000 pocket a day over what is being burned. Uh, ARR right now is actually set, set for 220,000 uh, pocket per day. So 220,000 pocket per day will be minted um, regardless of uh, how many relays are on the network, regardless of uh, what the price is. That amount will always be minted. That's what ARR does. Uh, with this model and what we want with Shannon is we want things to be a little more dynamic. Um, and so, and then this this shows the pocket inflation rate. So what I'm going to do now is kind of go over uh, the three different models because remember how I mentioned the uh, uh, I mentioned over here that we want to have it in a modular uh, fashion. Well, since we have this ability to have a modular fashion inside of Shannon, 
uh, I went ahead and structured this in kind of a modular way where we actually have three separate um, uh, TLMs, which is a token logic uh, module. We have three TLMs kind of all working together and each of them have their own parameters. So I wanted to kind of go through each of these now and explain what they mean. So relay, mint and burn, is where we ultimately want to go. This is where uh, mint equals burn. Um, this means at that point we can become deflationary because uh, whatever is being minted on the protocol uh, is actually what is being burned on the protocol. So that's kind of our North Star. That's where, where we want to get to. Um, and so I have kind of the core model here being this relay mint and burn. And it's actually very simple. You have uh, compute units, which uh, the compute unit fee, which uh, in today it's this is typically called the uh, relay to token mul multiplier. But again, because we're now going to compute units, we actually have to set the fee in compute units. So this is the uh, CUF, the compute unit fee. Um, and then this over here is the reward distribution. This is completely normal to what we have today. How much do we want each party uh, to get of each uh, uh, of the fee that's minted from, uh, or yeah, the, the fee. Uh, okay, so I should say this. So this is the fee that gateways will pay. On the flip side, this is also then what is minted. So anything that is burned in this model is also then minted as a reward for suppliers, uh, or well, for suppliers, for validators, uh, and for sources. I'm gonna be updating this in real time. Okay, um, so it's pretty simple. You set the fee, right? Uh, how much does each compute unit cost? Now, because everything is in compute units, what we actually have the ability to also do is then to set how much uh, compute units is inside of a relay uh, because we're not actually breaking down compute units uh, on a uh, call level where like this call costs this much uh, compute units, this other call might be heavier. And so it requires this much compute units. We're not doing that level of breaking down. Uh, what we're doing is we're setting a compute unit for each of these service IDs. So in this case, each of these blockchains, they all get a uh, number on how much uh, compute units equal one relay. So it's easy to understand here where you have uh, 100 million relays coming from Polygon. If they have uh, 100 compute units per relay, you're looking at 10 billion compute units, right? So it's, it's very simple, just this times this equals this. Um, and then that's what gives you, uh, uh, and then that also what gives you what the actual cost is for gateways uh, per relay. Um, so this is the exact same that it is currently uh, with ARR, where they uh, th this is how much both uh, or all of our gateways currently send a PNF uh, each week per relay. So this number here times relays. Um, but we've often talked about having certain uh, certain uh, service IDs. Uh, be, maybe because they're more difficult to run or because they're archival, have different values associated with them. So for Solana here, as an example, uh, I have set the compute units to 200. Um, and what that does is it's just double now what the other ones are. So each of these relays is actually worth 200 compute units, uh, not just one. So a gateway ends up paying more because that's a more expensive call. So the gateway pays more, uh, but then with each uh, with each then relay, uh, more is also minted for the uh, for the suppliers and for everyone else in the ecosystem. Uh, and then what I did down here is I just set all these to 100 because honestly, I think we're probably going to keep all of them at the same place because if we start nitpicking how much each one is, if we're calculating things on a relay base uh, system, then it could just get into very messy uh messy things where maybe someone who's on a certain chain wants their chain to increase um but uh someone else maybe wants their chain to increase so we don't really want to get into that uh with this kind of model so uh right now i have everything basically set at 100 however i have these llms 
which this is exactly what we're hoping to get into. Grove is currently doing a beta test with uh, on the uh, on the demand side of people basically sending inferencing through Pocket to LLMs hosted by uh, by other folks right now. So that's pretty cool. Um, and with that, we're going to need a way to give LLMs uh, uh, a compute or a, a value that's separate from uh, these uh, from our typical 100. So I have all them set at 1,000. I have this other one set at 5,000 and 10,000. So this is literally 100 times more, uh, but that's because, you know, this LLM3 uh, might require literally 100 times the compute uh, that one basic call from, uh, uh, from a blockchain node uh, when it's doing the inferencing. So. Anyways, I have those set there. Um, oh, and actually, I did. Let me quickly do something. I want to make sure all of our data is there. One second. Oh, man. Okay, I think I broke something somewhere. I just wanted to add some uh, uh, some relays here, just so it shows. Uh, why is this not showing? That fix it. Hey, I think I fixed it. Oh, boom. Okay, awesome. Uh, there we go. Build it, building the plane as we go. All right, so I, I've got some, uh, you know, uh, relays here as well to show how much uh, uh, how much compute units are being utilized on these different uh, LLMs as well. Anyways, so this is the core. Uh, this is the core logic where everything uh, where where we ultimately want to go, where only this is operating. However, because relays are so low right now, uh, because we're you know at four hundred million relays. Um, the amount that's being minted out of this system is really low. Again, in comparison, today there is 220,000 pocket being minted uh, each day for uh, as a, uh, for rewards. But this would technically only produce 3,000. So this system is not going to be enough because relays are low. Once relays uh, once relays increase, you know, let's say we you know, 40x, um, you know, right now, this is absolutely sustaining. Uh, it's getting close to being able to sustain enough for the uh, for rewards entirely by itself. Uh, so like here, we're uh, at uh, at essentially 35 billion relays a day, we are doing, uh, we are doing more than what current ARR is. But that's actually because uh, this is how much is also being burned on the network itself. So this is what's being burned and what's being minted. Uh, and so that's ultimately where we want to go. However, we're not quite there yet. So let me set this back down to where we're at today. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to boost this. So that's why the second uh, module, uh, TLM, is called the supplier boost. And what the supplier boost does is it sets a, uh, it sets a threshold um, it sets a it sets a deflationary threshold, meaning how many relays uh, do we want on the network, or how long do we want this boost to be alive? Basically, because right now we're at 400 million, we want to maybe hit deflation at uh, 25 billion. So you can set that in uh, supplier boost, uh, and then what uh, what essentially these two things are. Uh, what this is, is this is a calculation on how much value uh, will be minted uh, in part of this reward, uh, as as this reward. So, uh, and it's based in USD. Uh, and then this element uh, is for, uh, it actually sets a, a, a base amount of rewards. Uh, which is similar to how ARR operates, uh, but it's reduced. Bottom line is what this does is this allows, by having these two different mechanisms kind of working together, 
This allows uh, the return for suppliers to increase uh, regardless of if the price changes or like if the price goes up, uh, your return goes up in terms of the amount you're making per month. Uh, and if uh, uh, or if the amount of relays go up, then the amount that you generate per month goes up. So both of these are basically there to ensure that there's al there's always an increase in relays whenever there or there's always an increase in rewards if there is growth in the network, whether it's growth in the USD pocket value or there's growth in the amount of relays happening on the network. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so this is then where obviously we could choose, the DAO would be able to choose what do they want the threshold at? You know, do we want it to be uh, 20 uh, billion? If you go down to 20 billion relays, uh, you're gonna obviously see significantly less return uh, because, uh, because you're trying to get to deflation faster. Um, and so if you go down to 15, you know, we've almost cut the amount that suppliers are making per month uh, because we're trying to get to deflation by 15. So that's what this basic parameter does. And uh, the module itself, it automatically calculates uh, depending on how much uh, how much traffic is is happening on the network. It dynamically creates a uh, relay to token multiplier. This is actually similar to what we have today um, because all these because uh, this boost is is calculated um, using the uh, or at least right now in in this version uh, using the relays, the amount of relays that are actually happening on this network. Um, and so, yeah, you can see how much. Uh, so, like, if I increase this to, uh, if I increase this to, so 20x, if we 20x the amount of relays, you can see the amount that is burned or the amount that is minted per day uh, inside this boost decreases. And it keeps progressively decreasing until the threshold is hit. And so, right now we're at 17. So, if we go one more, we should be right under. Yeah. So, we're right under. And we're just minting only 22,000 uh, pocket per day, while over here under a mint, uh, under relay mint and burn, um, we're actually, you know, minting 150,000 over here. So this one can decrease. And then eventually it completely turns off once, once you hit a deflationary, uh, once you hit the deflationary threshold. Um, and so the amount that then a, uh, that it, the amount that a supplier makes is just proportional to uh, however much is being burned on the network. So as the relays go up, relays increase, so does the supplier return. Uh, and then the final element here is what we also want to do is we want to introduce sources. We want to introduce sources. Uh, and so this is a, a way to boost source revenue because again, if they were to rely on just mint and burn, uh, there's no way that they could get any meaningful return uh, from just mint and burn. So we need to boost their um, theirs as well. And so uh, it's a bit of a different system and it's got some different weights and things of that nature. But the moral of the story is what it does is it calculates, okay, so this is Polygon, uh, what will their uh, what will their monthly return be um, from uh, from the amount of relays that is happening on the network for them? So right now, with uh, four hundred million relays on the network, they would generate nearly two thousand dollars a month, which would translate into uh, translate into twenty three thousand dollars annually. Uh, and this percentage is a uh, uh, and so they're still receiving a percentage from uh, mint and relay, uh, mint and burn this whole time, uh, but then this boost is bumping it up so that they can actually have uh, decent rewards. Because if I turn this down to zero, you know they're they're making significantly less to the point that it's not even, uh, it, it, you know, it's it's so unsubstantial that. It, it wouldn't create any kind of interest. So that's why we want to boost this to allow them to uh, uh, get a little bit more of a return 
which can excite folks, especially if a chain gets up to a billion relays, which we've seen, we've had uh, a couple chains hit over a billion relays a day at, at, uh, uh, at points. Um, maybe not sustained, but uh, we've had chains that have peaked where it would be, you know, easily a billion relays a day. Um, if we were to, uh, if a chain were to send most of their ecosystem to Pocket, uh, and we they were sending a billion relays a day to the network, which a billion relays a day is not a whole lot for most of these chains, uh, they could literally be generating very decent revenue from this. And that creates incentive for uh, for partnerships with these uh, networks. Now, some of these larger ones, yeah, they might not be interested in, in connecting with Pocket. Uh, if they don't you know, care about this return, uh, this reward, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, but what about all these others that, uh, you know, that we partnered with before? Uh, we would be literally the only uh, RPC provider out there that actually uh, provides a way for their teams to get rewarded for the work that they're doing because users want to access their client software. We want to support client software. Uh, and far beyond blockchain, this goes to LLMs especially. Like once we get to LLMs, uh, someone creates a new LLM, it's doing something awesome, users want access to it, gateways want to sell it to their users. We want them to come to Pocket as a way to monetize that. Uh, so with uh, uh, like with this LLM, it's only doing uh, 10, 10 million relays a day. Nowhere near the 1 billion relays a day Coming from a uh, uh, coming from uh, a blockchain like Polygon, it's only doing 10 million relays a day. But obviously, because those relays require much more compute units, uh, it's equivalent. It's 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 almost equivalent to uh, uh, it's actually more. It's more equivalent than uh, uh, than these other um, than uh, just a blockchain node hitting that amount of relays. So this could be a real legit way that LLMs. Uh, are able to generate revenue from, you know, building a unique LLM, from uh, sending their community to gateways that, uh, you know, that offer their LLM. Uh, basically, it's almost like an affiliate program baked into the protocol, where every single one of these, uh, every single one of these platforms, which is why users are coming to Pocket in the first place, because they want to interface with these platforms, uh, it's it's you could almost see it as like a free affiliate link for gateways, um, because uh, these if what if any of these partners uh, decide that they want to send customers to uh, to the pocket network to gateways in the pocket ecosystem, man, this is a, a way that they get part of the value that's being generated from that business. Uh, so, anyways, I think it's exciting, but I don't want to go too far into it. Uh, but, you know, basically these these two parameters are the main parameters that set when is the cutoff point uh, for this uh, for this sources boost. Right now I have it set at 20 billion. Um, but all of this is editable to uh, to, again. Hit these incentives here. Uh, this is the, the purpose of these incentives. Um, so anyways, wanted to uh, now in my converting from relays to compute units. This isn't quite done yet to come out with the right calculations. Uh, I still have some uh, some cleaning up I need to do as like right here, it's it's still calculating in, in uh, uh, RTTM. So, uh, but what I wanted to do is this is another, ver this was the original version that was all calculated in compute unit or in uh, relays, uh, relays itself. And so what I wanted to do is kind of show what this model then looks like when uh, in different market scenarios. So uh, so say, so if you check here right now uh, at, you know, close to today's price uh, with the amount of re, uh, the amount of um, uh, relays that are on the network, the amount that a supplier would generate is $26. Uh, $26 a month, right? That's the average. Well, you know, let's let's increase this uh, to where, why is this not read only? Um, oh, actually, hold on one second. Let me, I think it's my user. 
Oh, okay. That was the issue. Okay. Uh, let me reshare. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, all right. Can people see my mouse moving? I've got the right. I've got the right thing selected. All right. Yes. The, awesome. Thank you. Twenty six dollars is what uh, the supplier would generate per month. Now let's start adding more relays. Uh, you can see that it starts climbing. It's not climbing substantially, uh, but it's still climbing. Uh, and so this continues regardless of where the network is. Again, to uh, based off of whatever the deflationary threshold is, which in this case I have set to 25 billion relays. So up until we get to 25 billion relays, it always slightly increases for suppliers uh, as more relays hit the network. Uh, and then in terms of pocket value, say, you know, pocket value starts going up as well. Oh, wait, that's because I have that set to zero. Uh, say the, uh, let me go back. Say the, uh, okay, this is where we're at. We're at 29, uh, 21, $29 a month. Let's say the pocket price increases. It also increases here. Uh, and so there's, it aligns incentives because it doesn't matter if there's growth on the relay side or on the value side, the, uh, amount that people, uh, generate per month still increases as the network increases. However, it's being done in such a fashion that we can still hit the deflationary target, uh, which right now is set to 25 billion. If you wanna increase everyone's rewards so that they receive more uh, with growth and they receive more from uh, the pocket value going up, you can absolutely do this by increasing when we wanna hit deflation. So, uh, so at least within this model, it calculates the most that uh, suppliers or anyone can get uh, within the you know parameters given the amount that each uh, person or each party in the ecosystem should generate. Um, but it take it calculates the most that it can possibly uh, give out while still maintaining true to the deflationary thresholds. So that's it, folks. Um, Happy to, uh, yeah, happy to answer questions. Just talk tokenomics in general. If there's any, uh, if there's any areas, especially in the, um, uh, any other goals that should be here that are not represented here, happy to also just answer questions in general. So there we go. Uh, I see a comment from Ramiro. The chain's cost is a, uh, <laughs> I see a comment from Ramiro. Yeah, the chain's cost is another discussion. Yeah, absolutely. That will take, um, yeah, all, all of this is, and, and Ramiro said it here, this is all uh, purely uh, illustrative. We're not, I'm not saying any of these parameters are exactly what they're going to be. Um, all of this is just to get a working model and then obviously the DAO would be able to set all these parameters uh, according to what, um, yeah, according to what the DAO votes on. So keep, do keep that in mind with all of this. Uh, how are rewards, uh, source rewards distributed? That's a great question. So source rewards are distributed uh, basically in a curved manner where, uh, let, me, let me go over to it, uh, in a curved manner where, up until a certain, uh, actually I have the number here, uh, up until a, from from 5 million relays a day, uh, which, let's see, let me, let me go back to a real world example. Um, okay, in, with today's relays, right, uh, this is how much uh, each of these sources will generate. Now, how much they will generate is, uh, basically calculated as as uh, at a curve where if they have at least where once they hit five million relays, the amount that they start that the amount that they uh, receive does decrease uh, up until they hit one point five billion to where they're actually only generating fifteen percent of uh, of what they were before. 
So here it's actually set at 90 uh, because I wanted to give the, um, uh, I wanted to give, uh, I, I set it here. All, anyways, all this can be adjusted. But what this is basically saying at 5 million, uh, up until 5 million, you're getting 90% of your uh, compute unit fee uh, back. So basically compute unit fee, how much of that uh, is actually minted for the champion at this in this case it's at 90 and then it goes to 15 at 1.5 billion so what this means is smaller chains will technically get more per relay um uh but then as they start growing it slowly decreases the amount that they get per relay uh so someone who has more relays always makes more than someone who has less relays uh they always make more they just won't make as much and the reason for that is if all this was set at 100 um or if this was not set uh up yeah oh actually that's what i should do uh let me change this to point 0.9 so if uh what would happen is the once especially once you get a lot of uh traffic on the network what you have is you have these big chains like taking away so much more of the reward than uh than everyone else and so what we wanted to do is create a curve uh so that it doesn't over uh it doesn't over mint for uh for the uh for the ones that have a lot of relays happening on the network anyways that's that's the example um it's nine it's it's a percentage of the uh of the compute unit fee that is then distributed in kind of a curve so that uh the big guys don't take uh too large of a portion but everyone else uh we we can incentivize some of the smaller guys to want to get into the pocket game by uh giving them a little bit more reward than those that already have a lot of relays on the network. Any, uh, yeah, any thoughts or questions, feel free to unmute. And again, if there's any, any of these goals, if there's anything that, that is feel like it's missed, um, now would be a great time to, to mention. One thing I actually saw in Telegram in the den was the talk of capping the total supply. Um, so I actually do have the total supply here, um, but you know, capping at like 2 billion or something like that. Um, I mean, that could easily be added to a model like this, but I would question if that's really what's best for the ecosystem, mainly because uh, you would basically be setting a relay bomb to where once you hit a certain amount, uh, regardless of where the ecosystem is at, it just bombs the rewards. Um, I feel that's a little risky, uh, and I would I would opt to just have clean, stable economics that allow us to get to deflation uh, through actual usage of the network versus just putting a uh putting a reward bomb that you know say there's not as much relay uh say there might not be as much growth do we the what we were hoping for do we want to just nuke the rewards for the entire ecosystem like what what's the value of people's tokens at that point if if literally the whole thing just nukes so i i don't really know if we want to put a you know uh, a relay or a re reward bomb on uh, on a certain cap. Um, I would just I for me at least I think it's way more attractive if you just have super solid economics that let people know exactly when uh, when will everything become deflationary? When will everything be built off of uh, uh, where all that's minted is literally from what is being burned by gateways? Um, I feel like that that's a much better value proposition. We can add the the reward bomb to this, uh, but I don't I don't really know what the value of that would be. And uh, but I'm open to hear other thoughts on it. Uh, 
Um, on the a slightly different angle to what you just spoke on the service, not service, or on the source boost. Um, yes. Is that payment, that payment is being delivered to the foundation or whatever of that particular chain? We're yes, this, this will be, this will not be a permissionless actor. Okay. Um, suppliers and gateways, they are permissionless, right? But sources uh, aren't necessarily permissionless. So what, what this would require um, and what we're kind of exploring and talking about would be sources could partner with PNF, uh, who kind of acts as a vetter to make sure that uh, whoever is, you know, claiming a certain source is that uh, is in fact uh, the owner of that source. And then what they could do is they inside their uh, repo uh, one one mechanism that I'm playing with and kind of like the idea of is inside of their uh, official repos they would put a little pocket blurb uh, with a wallet address. And we know that whoever's maintaining that, uh, that uh, the, the main client being used on these uh, chains is the one receiving the reward. Um, so who's the receiver of it? Uh, in, in, in some cases, it might be the foundations themselves. In some cases, it might be uh, it might be just a client, uh, uh, you know, a, a team or business or company that's building the client. Uh, really, whoever is controlling that repo is the one who uh, would technically get the reward. Now, okay. all of this is again through partnerships, and so there will be vetting and stuff on the side of PNF. Um, we can't have this be permissionless because we could have people claiming all sorts of things and there needs to be a human element to vet things out. So that's where PNF could come in. Uh, okay. to... And we see PNF making those payments basically manually. Do we see any support in Shannon to actually send those payments? My, my, uh, now the protocol team has not scoped all this out. So where we're at right now is kind of come up with a model and kind of some of the basic algorithms and the basic parameters. And then obviously they will be uh, scoping it out and then coding it into uh, the tokenomics module. And I see that Oshansky had to uh, uh, raise his hand there. Um, go for yeah, it. Let me jump in, uh, Ben Ben. So one of the many reasons why we're doing a protocol bureau with Canon is to improve the development environment. Um, amongst other <laughs> reasons that we don't have to reiterate right now, features like this are going to be almost trivial to implement once we have fully scoped it out and designed it from like a coding and implementation perspective. So, you know, once it's important to know that everything we're presenting here, this is an active area of research and development, right? And the DAO will have to approve it and everything else. But assuming all that goes through, with the new development environment, implementing something like this to take, you know, two to four days, and it will be automatic in Shannon. That's exactly it. And so potentially how it could be designed is where uh, where PNF is able to assign a wallet address to each of these service IDs. Um, and then uh, that uh, they whitelist, you know, whatever is inside of the GitHub repo. Or something like that, right? Um, inside the README. So that could be. Uh, so the idea is this would all happen on chain. This wouldn't be Pocket or, or PNF doing manual payments each month or anything like that. Uh, this would be, um, yeah, this would be automatic. Uh, but PNF would be doing the whitelisting. Go for it, Oshansky. Yeah. Another thing to note is, you know, we'll have to figure out what PNF intervention is going to look like you know, in terms of whitelisting, so that not anyone can say I own or I am the source for Ethereum. Uh, but something of note is that even already today in testnet, we do have a mechanism that when you add a new service or a new source, the address that whitelisted that, uh, that ID is on chain, right? So we already have that in place. There's already a fee associated with it to prevent civil attacks. So 
you know, we're designing it and building it all at the same time, and the primitives are already in place to enable it, literally on testnet right now. Hopefully that helps uh, shed some more light on both the research and development at play. Yes, thank you. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and one more thought I wanted to mention is uh, uh, this relay mint and burn, which is kind of our core uh, TLM. Uh, what we could, the idea of having these, you know, multiple uh, TLM model where we can have all these different token token logic modules uh, all working together is uh, uh, like. The supplier boost, as I said, turns off at 25 billion relays. Um, this source boost right now is set to uh, totally turn off at 20 billion. Um, and one other area that we would, you know, ideally like to start getting into post uh, post Shannon mainnet launch is start coming up with then the uh, compute unit per call. Um, system and what we could actually do is is have the compute unit uh so i guess this would be the uh cf uh mint and burn where each call uh we could have individual calls on any of these given chains have a uh a certain level of compute units uh which is you know uh which is what alchemy originally kind of came out with for the first time uh and now there's a number of other protocols that all do, um, or I should say uh, services that all do calculations and compute units. Um, and so we don't have to necessarily get rid of the relay mint and burn. Um, what we can do is literally just have a second, uh, uh, a second one as well. Um, a, a, a completely different, um, re or a completely different uh, TLS, or sorry, um, token logic module that is computing on uh it's computing on the actual calls per relay um the actual each individual call so that could actually happen in tandem that doesn't have to, we don't have to replace we don't have to be in this place where all of pocket has to replace the relay based economics uh that could literally be just a second economic model that uh that basically customers can choose you know do i want my relays to be uh you know do basically gateways do i want my fees to be entirely deducted in the relay or in the per call and obviously that that's not a perfect example there's all sorts of you know that there would there would have to be a number of things that would have to be figured out to have that enabled but the thing here is we can just add all sorts of different modules for whatever type of goal we have whether that be create compute units uh, for uh, RPC or create uh, LLMs, uh, different models for different types of LLMs. Uh, we actually have the flexibility to create literally an entire uh, module that just handles a specific re uh, service ID um, in a really kind of straightforward, simple fashion. Um, and as Oshansky would mention, once, once all the... Uh, uh, once all the foundation is made, adding this kind of logic uh, inside of the module is um, significantly less work than uh, than orchestrating a change on the protocol itself to now account for some kind of new uh, economic system that we want to include. Okay, um, can I ask a question? Pardon if this is if I'm catching up late, but. Um, it appears that you're saying that these three models, um, relay, burn, supplier, and uh, uh, source, source. Um, are basically separate, independent economic factors that get uh, that can have even perhaps separate cutoff dates as to when they end, or separate values. Right. That, yep. There's not one big combined inflationary model. It's the net result of all three separate models. 
Is that, am I summarizing yes. correctly? Yes. Thank you. Yep. And, and, and the reason of having it structured in this kind of like three system in the three system manner is, yeah, you can set independent, uh, you can set independent very, uh, parameters for each one, depending on whatever their goal is. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then they just shut off, right? Because we want to have a system where it just naturally shuts off. We naturally no longer have uh, inflation beyond what is being burned. Um, and the network can just gradually go there in a really autonomous fashion once it's uh, once all this is uh, coded in. So that's definitely the goal. And then with any new system, if we want to have some kind of you know system that incentivizes certain types of LLMs or some other data type, like there's all sorts of protocol can be used for anything. Um, we could literally have a, a, a TLM that's specific uh, for that and uh, you know to incentivize whatever growth or whatever kind of market um, that uh, that that service ID uh, that basically that service ID could you could benefit from. Oh understood. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says, uh, I, I see a question. Uh, what currency token is used for the sources rewards? All that's in pocket. Yep. E all that's in pocket. Uh, the benefit with the Cosmos SDK, if anyone was in the Twitter spaces today, um, it was talked about briefly how uh, off chain data is able to kind of be brought on chain uh, natively through the Cosmos SDK. So, as Oshansky says, uh, we're basically getting the ability to have price oracles for free uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, uh, in Shannon. So none of that's been fully, you know, built out or, or fully scoped out yet. But uh, but that's an ability now that it does exist within the uh, Cosmos SDK. So that's the reason we're able to set parameters like the compute unit fee. We're able to set that in U.S. dollars uh, because on chain we actually can have an on chain oracle. Uh, system where we're able to literally pull the value of pocket and then uh, and then deduce how much physical pocket that that would be uh, according to the value uh, the price of pocket at that time um, and so every all the rewards here are all denominated in pocket however we'll have the ability to uh, and it looks like we'll be able to have it just natively on chain the ability to have um, uh, the actual value. Uh, denominated in uh, something like USD. So value denominated in USD, but the actual payments are made in pocket. And uh, Oshansky mentioned, if anyone's interested in building it, uh, uh, we'll be opening up a bounty soon. There are a number of bounties uh, inside of the uh, GitHub repo right now. If you go to issues and then you sort by community, uh, you can actually see all the existing bounties that uh, are there. We actually have, uh, I believe my brother has taken up one. Uh, I believe we have someone else might be looking into taking up one. And so, yeah, people could act actively get started in, uh, in adding some of these features and uh, into Shannon through the bounty uh, the bounty program that is currently in the uh, pocket roll GitHub. Yeah. Uh, okay. I see. Uh, do we have uh, do we have time for a five minute demo of their gateway? Yeah. If, if there's no other uh, comments uh, or questions about tokenomics, uh, looks like Raid Guild would like to do a a, a quick presentation. Um, uh, okay, uh, if any, okay, just wanted to respond to one more question. Uh, how do we know who controls that wallet? Well, it, we don't necessarily, uh, they, that's why they have to go through PNF, um, sources. They have to be verified through PNF and then the, uh, wallet will have to be provably, uh, probably located inside of their repo in order, uh, to make sure that whoever we're talking to truly does have access to that repo to put the wallet uh, and to approve the wallet. So um, 
the wallet address. So yeah, we're we're going to be working out the specifics of all of that on how to verify that sources are who they say they are. But yeah, there I'm I'm actually not too worried that that'll be a a hard thing to do because it is the human side. Um, it, it's just the human side of it. Uh, if we were trying to do it in a permissionless way, that's where it gets very complicated. But because we're doing it through uh, uh, through PNF, who's able to operate as humans, at least for now. Um, yeah, I'm not really worried that this will be too difficult to come up with a way to just verify that a source is who they say they are. All right, I think I will wrap up there. We're right at the top of the hour. So if folks would like to stay for a few more moments, uh, it looks like Ray Guild wanted to do a presentation uh, or a demo at least of their uh, their gateway. So. I'm happy to keep the call going for just a few more minutes and answer questions on the side. But uh, okay, yeah, I'll uh, stop sharing my screen and uh, go for it, Sasquatch. Sweet, thanks very much, Shane. Um, yeah, and we'll keep this uh, keep this targeted. I uh, just wanted to show off that we have the gateway functioning and actually going to fully deploy or go live tomorrow. Uh, but wanted to give a quick demo of what we built, um, and so I'm going to hand it over to Plor um head of dev to show off what we built and encourage anybody any feedback um just uh feel free to drop it in the comments and at me thanks cool cool um so yeah let me share my screen here and uh if you have any questions feel free to drop them i'll try to answer but uh basically just going to run through kind of a normal flow uh account that hasn't been set up yet go through it and then uh show the uh, uh, rpc call so what i have here is our porter site and an insomnia window so i'm basically lo looking to do an rpc request but i need a endpoint so i'm gonna go through the process to do that so getting started And I just want to connect my wallet. So do that and then uh, sign with Ethereum step. All right, so I'm in. So I have a new account. Um, I'm going to so yeah, basically this is fresh, but what I first need to do, because it takes a little bit of time to show up, is um, adding a balance to my account. So if you go uh, back here, I have zero relays available. So I'm going to go to top up. So I uh, pre pre gave myself uh, five of this Porter token. It's basically what we use to track uh, balances, but make it so that it's, um, uh, it's in the ERC-20. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to redeem one one porter. Uh, I need to switch switch networks. And so yeah, basically I'm going to be adding a thousand relays. And um, the one of the goals of this is to what Shane was saying is um, the sort of compute units, so we can give each uh, porter token a uh, different uh, or basically it's it's a, a set number of compute units, so each uh, chain can be a different uh, different amount. Uh, we can uh, comp compensate for that, but yeah, this is basically a thousand, uh, or I guess a hundred thousand compute units in, in those terms. All right, so the transaction was successful, so that should update shortly. Uh, if I go back to the dashboard, um, this will be updating, but what I can do is create my first app. So, where's demo? Create an app. So then I see here that um, I now have, have an app that uh, if I click on, I'll be able to see some insights on it. So this is relays that'll show up. Um, endpoints, so these are all the 
current things that we're staked towards. And then we also have uh, rules. So this is uh, basically ways you can put constraints on your uh, your app. So secret key is just an API key, uh, adds sort of that extra header to uh, do authorization. Proof chains, so you can limit basically which endpoints are available. User agents, if you want to restrict to a certain uh, type, client type. Uh, allowed origins and rate limits. So th those are all that are available. And let me go here. I think the the balance should be updating shortly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this endpoint for ETH mainnet. So I'm going to paste it in my Somni window here. And it's not updating yet, but I'm gonna hope that it actually went through and send this. And yes, so I got my really went through um, the result there. And if I run a couple more, see that it increments. So uh, yeah, actually hitting hitting pocket, going through the whole thing. So this is the uh, the whole flow, and that's basically the demo. Just uh, setting up an account and uh, Sunny relay. So, yeah. Any questions or uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I think it's cool to note that I'm pretty sure this is the first pocket uh, gateway that is uh, that is Web three native, where you can pay uh, everything through through tokens. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure both Grove and Nodes is USD based. Um, where you do payment system, I might I might be miss, missing that, but I haven't seen uh, uh, basically a system like this where you could technically, and I I believe swap. Does that mean it could be other tokens as well? Uh, yeah. So the the actual ERC twenty allows you to mint with the native token. So that'd be Ethereum on most most chains that we're on. Um. Uh, so you can mint directly, or you can swap. Uh, basically, we'll have uh, Uniswap pools, so you can go from whatever token you have to to um, to our our Porter token. Very cool. Are there other use cases for the Porter token that you're thinking about? And this will all be on mainnet as well, correct? Um. So the currently the Porter token is on Optimism, Base, uh, Gnosis Chain, and Tyco. Um, I think the uh, makes sense to possibly put on mainnet. The fees are a little high, is the only thing. But um, yeah, the the main goal of the Porter token is just to basically track balances. Um, and the 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 nice thing is that you only have to redeem like a portion, so I redeemed one of my five, so I can hold back and decide like maybe I want to um, transfer this to a different account, or you, know, you maybe want to have a community that buys in bulk and then distributes it across people or whatever, so you kind of can uh, keep the balance separate from the actual system until you're ready to actually start uh, transferring relays. Very cool. And will the uh, the amount that you can get amount of relays per um, per port uh, porter token will that change as well, um, or does a certain porter one porter token always equal the same amount of compute units in this case? Um, so the uh, the idea is to basically match what what pocket does so if there's a compute unit increase we'll increase it per for that so that's in the uh, if you go into the endpoints so each of these can have a different value of how much uh, basically porter is used per per request and so we'll be able to match it that way so um, currently it's all each one each of these is just uh, uh, one basically one unit so there's a thousand per porter but that will vary when you know all that stuff goes live and so if we decide to uh, vary in any way okay so it, it sounds like the token itself 
uh, will essentially be worth the same amount of compute units. Now, each chain, as you mentioned, will have different compute units. But uh, but if like if a porter today is one porter is you know a hundred thousand relays, um, if the next day you know the value of porter just in trading it's gone down ten percent. Does that does the uh, the amount of uh, relays that I can get from that porter still stay at um, you know one hundred thousand or is it now ninety thousand? Um, so the the compute units per porter stays the same. Okay. Um, the the basically the the porter token because it's just kind of tra tracking our usage. We set the price of it basically. It can float obviously through like the swap and stuff, but there's there's no real other side of that market. So um, it's basically just we're setting the the cost of that, and that's because you're going through us that's doing it. So it shouldn't fluctuate like um, like a normal token because the the supply is based on sort of our usage. Very cool. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> and also just something to mention too is that we, you know, this is uh, kind of, uh, it's it's the baseline building block of this and the purpose behind this is to be able to tie in other forms of payment. So it was highlighted in our first couple like UX journeys or trials that like, oh, you know, this is going to be, it's kind of a lot of overhead to like swap and trade and burn and all this stuff. But the reason that we built it like this is so that you can tie in um, streaming payments um, uh, to handle kind of like the set and forget it model. Um, and uh, we're going to implement, have plans to implement something on our end as well to help automate that process as much as we need. And then also because the token can flow from any account, you can separate like a DAO paying for relays versus like the dev who has the account that's utilizing it. Or even better, you know, a hat. But yeah, thank you all for the time. We definitely recognize we're 11 over. So um, if you have any comments, um, please do feel free to uh, give us give us your feedback. And um, I think I got I think I got booted last time for trying to do this, but I'm gonna try it again anyways. Is you can come join our Discord and say hi. Oh, sweet. Thanks for taking the, the bullet there, Sayo. I hope you didn't get kicked. You're still here. Thanks for the demo, man. All right. That's yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so, awesome. If uh, anyone has any more questions for uh, the Raid Guild team, yep, let's keep them going in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, also, if there's questions about tokenomics, also happy to uh, answer some questions based off of uh, the presentation I did today. Uh, I will, we will be releasing kind of like a, you know, a model that people could play with and uh, see different scenarios, uh, see see what the tokenomics would be in different scenarios. So uh, that we'll hopefully be able to start getting that out in the next uh, uh maybe next two weeks maybe we'll we'll see uh, again this is all a, a continuing uh development process but we've gotten really far i think with identifying what we need this model to do and uh get it to where it's uh, successfully doing it in a way that is able to also mitigate gaming and things of that nature so anyways lots of exciting stuff open to any more questions um uh through the chats but thanks for joining us this uh builders call and i guess we will see you in probably two weeks so thank you everyone thanks shane thanks for thanks for the demo sasquatch and floor great work see everybody in a couple of weeks thanks everybody thanks zach thanks shane